today I'm going to be working on my Sketchbox July 2016 challenge using the materials from my Sketchbox basic box, which includes, I'm not going to use two, but I will use one watercolor postcard. These are Langton Prestige watercolor postcards. Maybe I'll even mail it. Uh, one Princeton Sumi brush, one, whoa, one Sketchbox signature water brush, and three Van Gogh watercolors. And I've already got a basic sketch of what I want to do right here. And I've got a pencil and I've got my Sailor Mitsuo Ida. So I'm gonna start sketching. And the idea I had for this month was a koi pond something that utilizes all three colors, which are vermilion, olive green, and phthalo blue, but also is cool and relaxing. So even though I have my reference, I mean, I have a thumbnail, I'm gonna bring up some reference really quick. See if I can, yeah. Get some inspiration. And uh, it seems like I draw koi pretty often, or at least fish pretty often on this channel. I am a Pisces. I don't know if that has anything at all to do with it. But I also just enjoy how soothing it can be to sketch fish. That's right, I drew a mermaid last month for my art snack challenge. I really do draw a lot of fish, don't I? It's going to be too big. Where is my eraser? Mm -hmm. Normally I have one up here, but not right now. You know what? I'll just think it differently. I can do that. I know how to do that. I wanted reference to get the movements of the fish. Because I felt like the pond I sketched out wasn't really, didn't really feel the way I wanted it to. 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 I wanted. All right, so we've got our basic layout, our basic sketch. So now I am going very delicate. Oh, you know what would look nice? Some water lilies on the surface of the pond. Just a few here and there. That'll introduce more of that olive green. All right, so we're starting with the sort of mossy rock islands. And I'm inking with my trusty Sailor Mitsuo Ida. It is Copic marker proof and waterproof. And I will zoom in for you guys. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. And those of you who are familiar with my channel have seen a lot of this brush pen. It is one of my favorites, but I'm gonna have to switch over to the also made by Sailor Rio Fuka soon. Another Copic or alcohol marker and water brew. Ah, jeez. Another alcohol marker proof and waterproof pen you can use are most of the Sakura of America Micron or Pigma pens. I really, really like the Pigma brush pens. I think those are great. And those are a little bit easier to find. 
And you can actually check out the other video where I drew a bunch of koi fish. Um, gee, it's the same. It's the same month I did the catch or not for the art snacks challenge. I want to say it's May, but it might not be May. It might be April. I mean, you can see me demonstrate. Alright guys, so this needs to dry completely to 24 hours, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so it's been a couple days and the ink that I used on my Sketchbox challenge is finally dried, so it's time to erase those pencils and get to painting. Ting. 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 The materials I'm going to use in this challenge are a cup of clean water, a spritzer of clean water, and my art uh, sketchbox Langton Prex bleh, my sketchbox Langton Prestige watercolor postcard, possibly a palette, the three watercolor paints that came in my July sketchbox, which are De Van Gogh Olive Green, Van Gogh Vermilion, and Van Gogh Thalo Blue, my sketchbox signature water brush, and my Princeton Goat Hair Possibly Sumi brush. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my Tombow Mono Adhesive Roller. And this is the removable adhesive, by the way. Since I can't stretch my little watercolor postcard, but I don't want it moving too, too much, and hopefully I don't want it buckling, I'm going to apply some of this removable adhesive to the back. Don't worry, this is indeed removable. It will come off. And I'm going to affix it to this non-stick craft sheet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply an all-over wash with the Van Gogh. And I really don't want a whole lot of it. And I don't usually work with two watercolors. I usually work from pans. So I'm going to take just a little bit and put it down on my palette. Get some clean water from my water cup and mix it up using this Princeton Sumi brush. And I want to start with a very light glaze. And I'm trying to stay pretty true to the materials that were actually included in my sketch box. I did ink this with that Sailor Mitsuo Ida, but that's why I'm not using a proper mop to apply this wash. All right, so I need to allow this to dry thoroughly before I move on to the next stage. All right, so that first layer is dry. We're going to do our next layer with, oh shoot, the vermil vermilion is really hard to remove and this cap sort of bites into your skin so helps to get it going with like a paper towel and of course it goops everywhere it's one of the big downsides about da Vinci so we're gonna do our next step which is the koi using the water brush brush Brush, 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 brush. And if you want a little more water, you just squeeze the barrel of your water brush. If you have little hands like mine, you might have to give it a pretty good squeeze put a fair amount of pressure. Oh, 
that I have all the fish filled in, I'm going to take my squirt bottle. Any day now, come on. Did you die? Did I kill my squirt bottle? Now is not the time for the squirt bottle to die. There we go. I'm doing this because I actually want there to be some bleed out with the fish. I thought that would look really neat. Now this orange one does not want to bleed out. encourage a little bit of that and I'm not trying to control it at all and if you want to clean your water brush you just scrub it on a paper towel while squeezing the bottle you will have to refill it all right so I'm going to let this dry and then move on to the next step. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, guys, so that layer's dry. It's time to move on to our next. We're going to be applying that olive green and using the same spritzer technique. So I have some of that Van Gogh olive green over here. And it seems like the thicker you apply the paint, the more movement you're going to get when you spritz it with the water bottle. So a thick application should be fine. We're going to be going back in and tightening up the fish and everything I paint with the olive green. Anyway, this is just to create some vis visual interest and maybe a little bit of movement. I'm finding that whenever you add or can add chaotic elements or elements that are just completely out of your control to the piece, it tends to make the piece a lot more dynamic and interesting. Like an interesting, like an interesting, like an interesting, like an. Now I did the orange first because I want the green layered on top of it. I'm hoping this will help give the illusion that the fish are underneath the water. All right, as with the fish, we gotta let this dry. All right, so our paper is dry. Um, there's one more thing I wanna do that's gonna include, going to involve that like splash sort of technique I showed you guys, and that involves a little bit of white gouache. Now, I didn't get any white gouache in my basic box. Maybe some of the premium box people uh, did. I highly recommend having some on hand if you're a watercolor artist or a marker artist it's um, very easy to work with and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some of the fish's white splots now I'm gonna have to tighten this up again later this is pretty much just so I can get that kind of carryover effect over effect over effect over effect And I take my spray, and you know what to do. So this is going to need to dry as well. And um, something I'm noticing is that instead of once the once the pigments are dry, instead of staying in place like I had hoped they would, they're migrating every time I spray, which is sort of the mark of... Um, you know, I mean, not quite the highest quality watercolor. Um, 
I mean, it, it's nice to have things like this on hand because you can get some really interesting effects with them. I just want to point that out to you guys. If you're looking to start your own watercolor collection, uh, the Van Gogh watercolors may not be the way you want to go. So I'm going to let this dry, like I said, and then we're going to actually, you know what? I think I might actually, while the paper is wet, go in with the blue, not to make corrections, but to start, because I want some of these fish to look more under the water than others. So I'll start using the Sumi brush, start brushing in some of that blue. If you want some areas to be a little darker than others, you can pick up a more concentrated color by going back into that little patty we made over there, wetting it a little bit. It's really relaxing to get to play around, especially with like watercolors like this. Not trying to do anything too serious, too rigidly detailed, just sort of messing around with the colors, messing around with paint. So far at this size, the Langton Prestige has held up pretty well. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. All right, guys, so my paper is still kind of damp, which is okay, I think, for what I'm gonna be doing next. Next, I'm going to work on darkening up the water just a little bit in some areas. And it seems like my Tombow removable adhesive did not quite hold the paper down the way I'd hoped when it got wet. Um, I think I probably should have taped it down using um, shoot uh, masking tape but I didn't want the borders reintroducing some areas of darker blue in here kind of enforce that modeled look look using some clean water I guess I could have used the water brush and I probably will from this point to sort of um, blend out some of the blue so it's less intense. Just in certain areas, trying to give this, give the paper sort of a, like um, like the reflection of the sunlight has hit it sort of thing. So I do wanna leave some areas light compared to others. sort of dancing that blue paint in, paint in, paint in, trying to keep things light and gestural. All right. So again, we're at that portion of the evening where we have to let it dry before we can come back to it. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, so my paper is not dry at all. It is like a damp, sad little biscuit. It is soaked entirely through. That's okay. Um, it is uniformly soaked. So hopefully I can add some color to the koi and maybe do one more spritz to sort of bring back that lovely uh, vermilion hue that was going on with them. The added gouache did not quite work the way I wanted it to. It ended up going very chalky.
instead of kind of dissipating cleanly, 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 cleanly. So I'll go ahead and let that dry. Actually, I kind of want to go in on the rocks as well. Unfortunately, my paper is going to buckle. So same as with the koi, I'm going to activate some of that olive green using my Sketchbox water brush. Start filling areas in. Come on, give it a spritz. Come on. Here and there, maybe dab up some of this extra color. See, the Van Gogh seems to be more opaque than the transparent watercolor we were promised. Of course, you guys know me, I can't leave well enough alone. So, mixing some of this blue back in, just here and there, where it won't hopefully interrupt too much with the orange. Because you don't want it to interrupt with the orange, it will, um, basically dull down the color because it's um, a complementary color so it'll sort of mute everything we just did good. Good. isn't it a shame that watercolor looks so beautiful when it's wet and the light is reflecting and yet sometimes when it's dry it's just kind of dull and lifeless really like how this looks right now but I know when it dries a lot of this is going to dry lighter than it is so it's going to look kind of you know just less vibrant all right well of course it's very very tempting while it's still wet and workable to for me to over render it to try and darken things up so much and then I lose some of the qualities that made it really nice to begin with. I make things muddy, I overwork them because I can't leave well enough alone. why I can identify so well with all my customers and friends who say they aren't watercolor artists because my natural tendency is not towards patience not towards wait and see and that's a lot of what watercolor is about is waiting and seeing how things are going to turn out and then making your decision but it always to me it always feels like by that point in time too late which I mean it's not it's just the way I feel All right, well, I guess I have to wait and see with this. So my paper is beyond drenched. It, it's been 20 minutes, water is sitting on top. This is the limit this paper can take. So I'm gonna allow this paper to dry out overnight before I continue. So I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, guys, um, I fibbed a little bit. It is dry enough that I can go back to working on it. As you guys can see, those lovely colors that I have, have had, had being the key word, they have dulled considerably, which is kind of unfortunate because they were so nice. And I've been taking in progress photos the whole time as we go. You can check those out on the blog if there's any stage you want to sort of revisit and, uh, you know, look at, feel inspired by in depth. That would be how you do it. So I'm pretty satisfied with how the water looks. So now it's time to work on those fish 
And I really shouldn't have done the gouache because the gouache like really made everything kind of muddy. That was my my fault. So I'm reactivating that vermilion. Again. And the Sketchbox water brush is pretty all right. It handles like any other water brush. Um, I am enjoying using it. It's a little bit more generous with its water, uh, how easy it is to get water out of it than some other brushes, which is nice. It makes it a little easier to use. Who do you guys think should win this month in Sketchbox ba Basic versus Art Snacks? I'm still deciding, but uh, I'm curious who you guys think made the better box. Do you like the fact that Sketchbox Basic came with three tubes of watercolor, even if they're more geared towards students? Do you like the fact that Art Snacks included one really nice tube of watercolor paint? Were you guys feeling inspired by the Yupo or would you rather stick with the more sort of traditional watercolor paper like the Langton Prestige? Y'all should let me know in the comments below. I'm not really asking right now what box is a better value. I mean, we can discuss that over on the blog. I'm just, you know, curious which box spoke to you guys, which got box inspired y'all. Because that's definitely something I'm trying to do with this channel is inspire you guys to make art. Just sort of blending out some of that vermilion. just so that I get kind of a softer transition on some of the koi, some of the koi, some of the koi. In your ideal sort of watercolor challenge box, what, what supplies would you guys like to see? As somebody who regularly reviews these sort of things or works with them on my own, I kind of have a private list. It's a little bit of sort of like a dream wish. I, kn I know these are not feasible products, but they're ones that I really enjoy. Um, so if we were doing like a special edition box for some art company, some art supply supplier, I would definitely want to see um, some maybe like travel or test vials of Brusho because Brusho is really fun and, um, you know, there aren't as many illustration artists using it. So that would be fun to introduce them to something kind of new. And let's see what else. We already looked at Yupo. Um, you know, maybe like some liquid watercolors. There's quite a few brands that do liquid watercolors. Um, liquid watercolors tend to be dye based. So, you know, they're not light permanent, but they come in these really brilliant colors. So if you're looking for something um, more neon or more um, fluorescent, that would be fun. Let's see. Maybe some masking frisket, although I struggle with it so much and I still haven't really found a masking fluid that I enjoy. So that might not really be the way to go. That might be the way to frustration, in fact. Um, gee, it's hard for me to think about my dream box and talk to you guys. Oh, definitely Derwent Inktense pencils. I love Inktense pencils and I know they were included in the Sketchbox Premium for, I want to say, January. Um, so it's not like they're not aware, but we're talking about my dream box here. Definitely a water brush. Um, I don't know, maybe some pans, maybe like some of those Kuratake, uh, Gansai Tambi pans, like the gold, silver or silver ones. Um, or maybe a spray bottle with instructions Sort of like what I showed you guys here. They're not, you know, they're not exotic. They're not hard to use, but they can add a lot. Um, and that's honestly what I think a lot of these companies could be doing is, um, you know, going out of their way, not only to like showcase artists on their 
boxes and stuff but to like you know have hire pay an artist to sh demonstrate a technique or i mean pay your employees or pay yourself if you <laughs> you know either way like there should be there should be some reward for the person who's d giving up their knowledge like this to teach other people how it's done all right, so I added some of that phthalo blue to the rocks. It's got this really nice, hazy, sort of dreamy quality to it, which I'm really enjoying right now. Go back in on some of those koi. Um... Molotov has a aqua marker that's a watercolor marker that uh, is prohibitively expensive in the U.S. that I would love to review. So I, I guess I'd like their aqua marker in there. It's supposed to blend like a, um, here I am giving away one of the products I'd like to try at some point. Not literally giving away, but you know, like letting the cat out of the bag. Um, shoot. But it's supposed to blend more like an alcohol marker, even though it's got a water base in it, which makes me think there's probably a lot of glycerin in there. But I'd love I'd love for a box to to, you know, have that in there. Um, Japanese stuff always high on my list or maybe a box that focuses on like introduction to sumi painting, you know, that kind of stuff would be really cool. Um, gee, like pretty much anything that could introduce new techniques to people that they're not familiar with. So a crayon for wax resist or, um, salt and a little vial of maybe like rubbing alcohol for that drop technique I showed you guys over on the art snacks video. Um, maybe encouraging people to play around with water soluble inks like Winsor Newton's inks in conjunction with paints. And I don't know, these boxes have like kind of, kind of forced me, but in a good way, have kind of forced me to be open to mixed media. All right, so as you guys have noticed, maybe some of these fish are not as translucent as others. And some of these lily pads are not as translucent as others. And some of that is yes, because I did add that gouache, I know. But some of it is also like over here, I didn't add any gouache over here, you know, or over here, it, all of the, the color, that's from um, the opacity is from those watercolors that are supposed to be so transparent um and doing opacity tests is important and it's something i do with my regular watercolors because this sort of like additional opacity can really lead to making things appear muddy and muddled and not like beautiful and vibrant and crisp and translucent and shiny and jewel like which is what i think a lot of the adjectives we are looking for when we do watercolor um it's important to acknowledge that some of that is on the brand for not promising the product they not delivering the product we had been promised. Um, I know a lot of people sort of blame their own skills for that. And some of it is, you know, my own skills lacking, but some of it is also just the paints not handling the way they were promised to handle. All right, so I'm going to allow this to dry and see how it looks. Um, I'm sort of on the fence. I sort of want to tighten some of this line art up again because a lot of it got lost. But I also like the hazy sort of dreamlike qualities we've got going on. So I don't want to tighten anything up too, too much. So I'll check back in with you guys when this paper is dry. Hey guys, so this has had a little bit of time to dry and you can see how much the color has sort of faded in vibrancy, especially over here. Uh, remember when we had those beautiful mottled blues in there? Um, I'm gonna try and add those back without, hopefully without disturbing things too much. Uh, first by moistening the area, uh, adding some more of that blue, uh, sorry, olive green, just to sort of I was hoping it would darken it, but it's really not going to uh, at all. 
and going in with that phthalo blue see that olive green is really an kind of an opaque color it's probably like semi opaque um so that makes darkening these areas pretty hard to do maybe i should have just gone straight in with that phthalo blue blending it out just a little bit and then i'm gonna take my opaque white gouache and I'm just gonna add a few let me see if I can reactivate it dried in my pan yeah and I'm gonna add hopefully just a few white details to these koi fish really seems like the opaque white is drawing kind of dull on this paper. I want to blend a little bit of it out so I don't have such um, harsh definitions. It'd be cool to see a box include Terra skin. I have it and I need to get around to testing it out. I've just been kind of busy, um, but it would still be one of those shoot that was too much water one of those things that you know you wouldn't normally see in a subscription box and there's so many of them out there now i can i can't keep up with them i'm not even gonna try i'm just gonna focus on the sketch box in the art snacks unless one of the companies contacts me all right let's let this dry All right, guys, I'm going to try and revisit that adding blue to the mossy bits. And um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there is definite chalkiness in certain areas. You know what? I'll get a photo of it and you guys go check out my blog and that way you can see it close up. Anyway, you don't really get that sort of chalkiness except with... Um, like cheaper opaque colors. So also look at look it all like reactivated that that olive green and that olive green had been dry for like an hour. Okay, adding in just a little of that dark blue. Then going in Adding it as a glaze, just here and there. Another thing I'm noticing is it very, surrounding areas very quickly absorb paint. And this usually happens, again, when you're dealing with, um, you know, lesser quality, chalkier sort of paints. So... I'm going to let that dry and hopefully that won't be chalky. Um, that phthalo blue is so intense. Um, I'm hoping it'll sort of help mitigate some of the problems that are kind of going on with that um, olive green. So tomorrow I'm going to tighten up some of the line work and decide whether or not I want to add gouache accents to things other than the fish. So maybe some like water highlights. I'm not sure yet. I might do that in color pencil. I might completely skip it because I kind of like how it's looking right now. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning for real this time though. All right, art friends, it's been, um, I guess, like eight hours. I let this dry overnight. Now I'm just going to tighten up some of the line work, going back in with my Sailor Mitsuo Ida pen. It's the same pen I used the first time, and I want to remove my washi tape. I just used this to sort of hold my paper down while it was wet to help prevent buckling. I clearly did not use enough because it did buckle on the back. I mean, uh, buckle slightly, blur. Um, clearly this is not a very heavyweight watercolor paper. And you can remove that Tombow adhesive pretty easily, either using your finger or using a um, liquid frisket 
or a liquid masking fluid pickup. And it kind of just comes off, rolls off, comes off, rolls off, comes off, rolls off, comes off, rolls off, comes off, rolls off. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all of this adhesive from the back. I'll check back in with you guys in a couple minutes. All right, all the, bleh, all the removable adhesive is now gone. Time for me to tighten up this line work just a little bit. Just a little bit. And all I really mean by that is just sort of going over the areas that were made opaque by the watercolor that was placed on top. And remember that this watercolor is touted as being very transparent, very... my postcard is just about done um so my thoughts on the sketchbox basic for this month um i really liked their sketchbox signature water brush i feel like it performed well it gave a decent amount of water release without oversaturating the page it didn't require excessive amounts of um squeezing and actually is and it doesn't leak that's one of the better water brushes i have used um i also liked painting with the princeton uh sumi brush it sort of turned me on to the idea of painting my watercolor stuff with a sumi brush so i have a few um i may start using these more regularly it actually handled really well um and this is an affordable way to get a larger size like this four here this is not this would not be a four round. This is like a six round. Um, so it's an affordable way to get those larger watercolor brushes without paying the price of larger watercolor brushes because Sumi brushes tend to be pretty inexpensive. Um, let's see. Uh, the Langton Prestige card is, um, well, it, it did buckle a fair amount. Um, I have a feeling if I had to guess, this is 140 pound paper, which isn't bad. It does mean I should have secured it on all four sides if I wanted to prevent buckling. This makes it not ideal for field work unless the other pads come bound on all four sides and I'm not feeling any but one side of gum. Um, the Van Gogh watercolors, they came in brilliant colors, but those brilliant colors don't remain brilliant you guys can see and it looks even more chalky in real life um they're just not as transparent as i would have liked they turn chalky when they dry they don't necessarily layer very well so i did have some disappointment with the van gogh paints all in all, though, I thought this was a fun box. I thought this was a better introduction to watercolor than their January box, which was was a very disappointing box. Um, if I were a young artist, and by young, I mean in my teens, I would be really excited about this box because it included almost everything you need to get started with watercolor, which is nice. This is, this is a move that I am excited to see Sketchbox make. And I hope they continue it in the future. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time. I hope you enjoyed um, our challenge together. Uh, if you guys enjoy my work and you want to hang out more, please check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. I've got seven years worth of art reviews, demonstrations, tutorials, me sharing you know, my life as a comic artist, me sharing my experiences going to SCAD for art school, all kinds of good stuff there on the blog. Um, if you are, if you really like my stuff, you really want to help a friend out, please share this video or any video from my channel to your social networks using those handy social sharing buttons there below the video. The more you share to, the more you help me. I'm trying to expand my audience, meet new friends, talk to new people. That would be a great way to do that for me. Um, if you want to hang out some more, you can subscribe to my channel. Lots of videos on here already. Lots more to come. I've got a video backlog I am super excited about. A lot of good work has gone into that. 
Um, and the last way you can help out is financially you can help fund more videos like this this video was brought to you guys thanks to the genera generosity of my backers on patreon and for information about how to join that community please check out patreon.com natto suit i mean patreon.com slash natto suit so i'm becca hilburn like i said thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today i can't wait to see you again i can't wait to share more art goodies with you guys bye <laughs>